Making doors in Unreal is very easy. Today I'll show you how to make an interactive door using any button you want to open the door, and when you walk away from the door, it'll automatically close. We'll even add sound effects. First thing, make sure you have a door, a cube, anything you can use to follow along with the tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm gonna use a pre-made door I made out of shapes in Unreal. First thing I want you to do is hover your mouse around the content browser, you're gonna right click, then you're going to click on Blueprint Class. This window is going to pop up and you're going to click over here where it says the Actor. Now you can name this blueprint whatever you want, but I'm going to name it Interactive Underscore Door. Keep in mind that Unreal does not like when you put spaces, so avoid that. Just use underscores. And now you're gonna double click your new blueprint and this window is gonna pop up. If you want you could just make it bigger. And now once you're in this blueprint you're gonna come over here to the add component, this green add component button. You're gonna click it and then you're gonna look for static mesh right over here. Name this whatever you want, I'm just gonna name it door. And right here where it says on the left on the details tab, this is where you're going to control. These are where all the details and controls are for this specific item. So on the static mesh tab, you're going to click on it. And this is where you're going to select your door, whatever its name, type it in. If you don't have a door, this first option is a cube. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use the door I already have pre-made. Okay, now that you have your door, Click Compile, and now make sure you don't have anything selected, and you're gonna go to the Add Component box over here again, and you're gonna, this time you're just gonna type Box, and you're gonna click on this Box Collision tab. You're gonna click on it, name it whatever you want, I'm just gonna leave it as, as Box. Over here on the right, where it says Shape, this is where you can make the shape of your box collision. The box collision is going to be used to detect how far away or how close the player is to the object so the command can actually work. Now, so you could just extend it over here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger than the door, maybe a bit wider, make it a bit taller, and move it a bit over here. That looks about right to me. I'm just going to move it a bit over here as well. Okay. Okay, now that you have your box collision set up, you're going to click on compile again. And now we're going to add this door to our scene. So the best way you can do that is you grab the window over here, put it on the left, grab this window, put it on the left, and grab this window, put it on the right. Okay. So now move your space over here and you're going to grab your interactive door from here and you're going to place it in your scene like this. Make sure you properly move it up so it can fit your door hole properly. Okay. Now and now that I'm looking at the door, I want the collision to be a bit wider. So this is also a good thing uh, to to stay like that because if you have two monitors this is easier so just click on your box over here and can't see it that well but over here I'm gonna make it gonna make it a bit wider using the Y okay that looks good to me click compile I always click on compile uh, okay, now we're gonna start in the event graph. So I'm gonna make this bigger so you can see what's going on for now. And we're gonna click on the event graph. So this is where we're gonna start using nodes to make our door move. So the first thing we wanna do is click on the box over here. We're gonna right click, click on add event, and we're gonna click on add on component begin overlap. 
So this means that when something is in the box, something happens. So, so we're gonna click on the we're gonna click and drag on this executable triangle, and we're gonna drag it out like this, and we're gonna let it go. The search prompt opens up, and now we can type whatever we want. So we're gonna type enable input, which is right over here. Enable input. So this means when the player is in the box that the input so any key input is enabled and now we're gonna go on the box again we're gonna right click add event now we're gonna click on add on component and overlap so this is when the player is not in the box so over here i want to do something a bit different grab the node from over here right and we're gonna let it go and we're gonna search for sequence right over here sequence this node allows us to make more than one executable so we can make it now disable the input and then later on we can make it do something else now we're missing one last thing over here we have to tell the um, inputs on what exactly they're going to enable and disable the input on. So we're going to click on, we're just going to right click on an empty space and we're going to search for get player controller and click on that. So you can see on these nodes, they're already a player controller node and they're blue connectives. So you can just connect it over here and connect that one over there and click compile okay so now this is just a basic enable and disable from a box collision right now i want you to right click on an empty space and you're just gonna type e you're gonna scroll a bit up till you find uh this and scroll more up until you find the E key right here and now so this is this this node is basically when you press E so when you press E we want something to happen so we're gonna click on pressed and drag and we're gonna click on sequence because we wanted to do a few different things the first thing we wanted to do is um, on this then one executable we're gonna right click and drag and we're gonna just make a simple sound effect play sound 2d if you, have, if you already have some sound effect imported you can just go over here select asset and you're gonna search for your um, sound effect mine is uh, sliding glass door opening okay now we're going to make the actual animation and we're gonna make it precise just the way it would fit perfectly in our scene so we're gonna cl click on click and drag on this then executable then zero executable and we're gonna search for timeline add timeline i'm just gonna call this door close and open <coughs> i'm just gonna call this door open and close You'll see why in a second why um, it's called both of that. So double click on it and you're gonna click on the V over here, the V plus. This is a vector. So this, this handles in coordinates and location. You're gonna click that. You're gonna name your track, whatever you want. You can just leave it at track, new track underscore zero if you want. So I'm just gonna call it um, animation. Okay, so um, right now, we're gonna go back to the viewport. We're gonna click on it, and we're gonna see which direction exactly has to go. So it has to go in the Y direction, this way. So we're gonna go back to the timeline, and we're gonna lock all the ones that aren't Y, and 
and um, kind of make them invisible. And we're gonna go click around here where it says zero. I'm gonna add key. We're gonna make the time exactly zero and the value make sure it's also at zero. Now the sound effect I have lasts around three seconds. So we're just gonna go with the three second mark, add key to Y and we're gonna put it exactly to three seconds. And now the value, we're not gonna touch that yet because we need to know an exact value. So we're gonna grab this, we're gonna put it back over here. We're gonna go to our newly made door over here. Go back to the viewport. And you're just gonna move it up until it seems kind of right. That looks about right to me. So you can see over here that the Y changed over here to negative 193. So we're just gonna copy that, go back to our timeline, and the keyframe we made at three seconds, we're gonna put the value to that negative uh, 193. So just click uh, these two boxes over here to see your line clearly. And now to make it a bit smooth, we're just gonna right click on it, we're gonna click on auto, and we're gonna also go to this one and click on auto. And now we could just uh, move it, give it a bit of a curve, just a little bit like that. So the animation will be a bit smoother. I'm gonna click on compile. Okay, so the animation is done. We'll make sure this is uh, on three seconds. It all depends on how long your animation is. It could be long, it could be shorter, but when your animation ends, just make sure it's on, the length is on the same uh, time as it ended. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go back to the event graph. And from this update node, we're gonna right click and drag and search for set relative location. And we're gonna click on the door. And you can see that this is going to make the, the model move to a new location. So you can type in a manual location over here or you can just drag this yellow one to over here and it'll just add the value that we entered from the Y coordinates. Okay, just gonna hit compile. Okay, as it is right now, it should work. So when you go up to it and press C, it should open, play a sound effect. But now we also want it to close when you walk away from it. So over here, we're gonna want it to do, we're gonna add another pin, we're gonna want it to do something else. So we're just gonna grab this den one, we're gonna go up and we're gonna put it to reverse. So, so this means when you leave the box collision, it's going to play the animation in reverse, essentially closing the door. And now from this den two, we're just gonna play the sound effect of the uh, sound closes. So we're just gonna, um, we're just gonna use play sound 2D. This is just a simple uh, sound player without any like ambient sounds and like stereos and stuff like that. So we're just gonna, you're just gonna search for your asset if you have one, minus sliding door closing. And now um, this system works best if it's a linear game as in, now this system works best if it's a linear situation. So meaning you can go only go through the door once and it'll close behind you and you can't go back. So to do to make that work smoothly, you're just gonna click and drag over here and you're gonna search for do once. And now this is literally just gonna do it once. So you can't click on it anymore. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna grab that, click on do once. And now you can, this will only happen once then. Okay, I'm gonna click on compile. And we're gonna close this, open this. All right, <laughs> remember to, uh, we forgot to put our door back to in its place. So 
so it was at zero put it back at zero okay compile so just click play and now when you, once you go up to your door I have this little nice E prompt so you can go up to it and press E and now the door was smoothly open with its sound effect I'm not sure if you can hear that but it should play a sound effect and you can go through the door and it will close right after it now you can't go back and do anything else anymore like I said lean your door well that's it for this tutorial guys if you want more videos like this please leave a like leave a comment on what else you want to see we're actually gonna do a um, series of videos on how to make a uh, first-person shooter so if you're interested please subscribe so you don't miss a video and we'll then see you next time